Hello everybody, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming, and in this uh, RPG Maker video, uh, I'm going to introduce to you my new plugin. It's still in beta and there's still some problems with it, but uh, it works for the most part to do kind of what I want it to do. So this is basically a very simple plugin, uh, and I had help from some random dude and Yanfly. Thank you both so much for all the questions. I know I bugged, I bugged you guys a lot, so I just want to say thank you right off the bat. This plugin is called Place Animations, so DG underscore Place Animations, and what it does is it lets you place an animation anywhere on the screen without having to target a player or an event. So most of the time when I would design my uh, my place my animation events, I would have to place a blank event there and then target that that blank event, and then when I if I were to bind it to a key press or something, then that event would play that animation where I want it. But if I move my character around, the animation moves to where the event was playing. So if I wanted it to be consistently like across the screen or something, I couldn't accomplish that when I move my character around unless I had a ton, and I mean a literal ton, of move event uh, commands as a, in a parallel process. And that uh, that wasn't the way that I wanted it to work. So uh, I decided to start making plugins just because I wanted this plugin to happen. And I'll probably keep, uh, I've learned so much that I'll probably keep making plugins in the future. So before you go crazy with plugin uh, requests, I'm not super great at making plugins, um, but I'm, I'm learning a lot. So um, if you have a request, make sure it's a very simple request for a plugin right now. Uh, I, I don't expect to come out with any crazy battle systems or something like that. But anyway, uh, I'm digressing. This plugin is gonna basically let you uh, spam animations across the screen. And if I press, see I'm binding these uh, to key presses. So if I press the one using Yanfly's button common events, I'm pressing uh, the number pad and I'm creating these animations across the screen. And I basically made these uh, with uh, the plugin using plugin commands and uh, common events inside of a common event. So when I press uh, a button, it's playing an animation sequence uh, that's being created with a bunch of plugin commands and conditional statements. So you could basically make your, your own uh, out of battle uh, action sequences. Well, I guess we can call them animation sequences. And uh, it's a pretty cool plugin, I think. Uh, hopefully you guys can find a use for it. Um, make some cool parallel process, process events and button common events and you can create games that aren't even RPGs, you know. So the RPG Maker MV Engine is really, really awesome in a sense that you don't even have to make RPGs with it. You can make all kinds of different games. Uh, and this is just the tip of the iceberg on what's to come for our, what RPG Maker MV can do. But let's take a look at the plugin parameters really quickly. I'm going to put a link in the description below to where you can download the plugin. It's still in beta version, so I'm sure there's stuff wrong with it. You can send me your bug reports. Um, I'm working on a core engine as well that's just going to do some things that's going to help me make my plugins, other plugins in the future. But it's this is a non-dependent plugin. This is a standalone plugin that'll work by itself, so you don't need the plugin, uh, the core engine to make this work. You, you could just download the DG underscore place animations plugin. We've got some default parameters. Uh, right now, you don't even need to mess with these uh, parameters, but you can change them if you want to. We'll go to the help file here. Um, locations where you can send bug reports. I'm sure you guys know how to get a hold of me. Uh, let's talk about X and Y locations, because how this plugin works is uh, you go to tab three on a new event and you go to the bottom and there's a thing called plugin command and you use the plugin command to put in uh, the plugin command itself and the parameters, the arguments of that plugin command. So you would go to tab three, go to the bottom, click plugin command, and then you would type in this place anim and you would basically, it has to be capital sensitive. I mean, I could, I know how to fix that and make it where it's not capital sensitive right now in the beta version. It is cap sensitive, so capital B, capital A. And you do animation number, um, and then you put the X location, the Y location, if you want the animation mirrored or not, and then the delay before the animation starts. So here's an example of uh, how you would put, what you would put in the plugin command. You would do place anim, then you'd select the animation number, then you select the X location here, the Y location, zero or one for if you want it mirrored or not, and then the number of frames delay you want. What this does is it puts a delay in front of uh, the, the plugin command so that uh, if you want the animation to play a second after you press the button, you know, like there's a charge up sequence or something, then you just put 60. 
because there's 60 frames in a second. So this plugin command right here would play animation number 12 um, at the at the X location of 640, the Y location of 360. It will not be mirrored, and there'll be a five frame delay before it starts to play. So what is X location and Y location? I'm sure a lot of you already know, but if you don't, it's basically it takes uh, it's how the the plugin knows where to put the animation. So X is across the screen from left to right and then Y is the top to bottom. So this is completely dependent on your resolution. And there's a, a plugin, there's several plugins that change your resolution. I recommend using YEP underscore core engine because it does a lot of other stuff that you would want in your game as well. So you can set your resolution to whatever you want. I put all my games in standard HD because it's just, I think in the future, most games are gonna be in HD and uh, and and beyond you know we're getting to 4k gaming but we're digressing so in the top left you've got zero zero that's the very top left corner the first pixel of the screen where it we're simulating that this is our our monitor right here when our game is in full screen so zero zero is the top left and you go all the way to the right and the top right is your x uh your X is going to be to the end. So if my X resolution is 1280, then 1280 is in the top right. And then since we're still at the very top, it's zero. So this is 1280 by zero up here. And in the center of the screen is your resolution cut in half. So if you're using like 800 by 600, then the, the middle would be 400 by 300 as a resolution. So in standard HD, 640 by 360 will be the center of the screen. The bottom left of the screen is 0, 0720 since the X location is still all the way to the left, so you've got zero, and then the Y location is all the way down, zero, 720 right there. On the bottom right of the resolution uh, of the screen is your game's resolution. So if you're using 1280 by 720, the very bottom right corner of the screen is your max resolution, in this case, standard HD, 1280 by 720. All right, so we move, uh, we've got that down. Uh, the known issues for this plugin is the wait for completion isn't implemented yet. I'm still trying to figure out how to do that. I'll probably have to recode some things in order to make uh, so that you can toggle wait for completion or not as another parameter. Uh, another thing is sprites will remain in memory until there's a scene change. A scene change means you press escape and go to your menu or you change to a different map. Um, I've tested this for 10 minutes, spamming as many animations as I can in the in the program without changing scenes uh, for 10 minutes straight, and I had no issues with it. So uh, in theory, this is this is not a good thing. You don't want your sprites to remain in memory. Um, but the the code that I've used to dump the sprites isn't working right. Like I said, I'm still working on it. But I haven't had any issues with it at all. So if you have any issues with the the game crashing from uh, uh, while using this plugin, let me know. So if it's a problem, I can I can change the priority and, and put that and fix that. Um, let me know how much RAM you have and if what uh, what device you're using if you're playing it on a phone or something, so I can get a sense of what it'll work on and what it uh, what it currently doesn't work on. And feedback, uh, all your feedback is appreciated. Uh, some animations that have a flash screen will only display the flash on the left hand side of the screen. I don't understand that. I'm still trying to figure that one out. But uh, I know how to get around that, and I'll show you how to do that. So that's it for the, the help file. Uh, the parameters, basically, all you have to do is put in whatever number you want. This is a default value. So if uh, you don't put any plugin parameters on the plugin command, it'll just use these, uh, these parameters uh, if you don't want to put any plugin uh, parameters. So uh, an example. Uh, let's go over this. I'm using Yanfly's button common events, so I'll put a link in the description below for where you can get Yanfly's button common events if you don't already have it. What you basically do is you go to the parameters and you select what uh, what keys you want to press for the animations to play. And I'm using 1 through 10 or 1 through 0. And then I'm selecting some common events that are currently blank. So I put in 70 to 70, 70 to 80 and then I'm using all of the top row keys. So basically you just double click right there, put in a, a blank common event for, to start off with, and then uh, you can use any key you want actually. So once you've got that, you'll go to your common events and then you can select, go to the ones that you specified and then just name the common events the button you picked. You don't have to do that, but it helps uh, you keep clear on, uh, it helps keep you organized so you know what common event is associated with, with which button press. Uh, so in order to do the animations that I did, um, I made a conditional statement saying if the player is facing right, uh, put it in a plugin command that shows this animation at this location, no delay and no, um, 
or no, not mirrored and no delay. And then uh, I did a little wait. So we do wait five frames, 10 frames, whatever you want. And then you could do another plugin command, basically copy paste it. And then I've added a little to the X value. So if I wanted to, the, if the player's facing right, I want the animation to go from the middle to the right side of the screen. So I'm adding to the X value. So I'm just adding a little bit to the X value and keeping everything else the same. Do another wait, copy paste that, change the X by adding a little more. Do the same thing until you get almost to your max resolution. And then the animation will play boom, 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 all the way across the screen to the right. Basically, you can uh, do the same thing you just did there. If the player is facing left, then you'll put in the center, the first animation. So this is the same as the first one here. Then you put in your weight and copy paste that and change the X value by subtracting a little bit because now the player is facing left. So we want to take away from the X value and do that all the way down to you get to about, you know, the beginning of your resolution, 10, for, uh, 10 pixels. Then if the player's facing up, we're going to do a very similar thing, copy paste the first one, but then we're going to change the, uh, the Y value this time. So 640 will be the same for when the player's facing up. What we're going to do is subtract from the Y value as we go up and keep all that the same. So as this goes down, you can see that the Y value is, is getting less and less and less. When the player's facing down, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to add to the Y value. So the first one's the same, starts in the center, and then it's going to add to the Y value. So 415, 470, 4, or 525, all the way down to near your max resolution. And that's basically, um, that's basically it, how you would do that. For the Thunderstorm one, basically all I did was keep the same code but put in a different uh, animation number for like the fire one and the cold one. So you make it one time, you can copy paste it, change one parameter. So on this one, it's animation number four. Then the second one is animation 163 and 155. And so once you kind of design it once, you can have a, uh, you can just, you know, change one number on the, pr the plugin parameter and it'll change it. Uh, for the Thunderstorm one, uh, I did place one animation at the beginning, then a wait frames, and then I created four different animations to play at the same time. So you don't have to put a wait in between them. So you can have animations, explosions all the way across the screen at any time. Really neat little functionality. So then it plays four animations that waits for five frames, plays four more animations, waits for five, five frames again. Might actually change that to 10 frames because there's a lot's going on, but it, it works fine how it is with five. I might even change it back to five. Uh, but experiment with this plugin. Let me know uh, what you guys think. If you like this plugin, um, let me know. Give this uh, video a thumbs up, like, favorite, share, subscribe. All of that stuff is appreciated. So um, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for being awesome. Uh, let me know your special requests in the comments below. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.